Hey everyone, Coach Dave here. In today's video, we're going to analyze one of your laps against one of our pro laps using a combination of delta and replay. By doing this, I hope you learn more about how to analyze data and how to, you can use it to improve your lap times. Today's analysis is going to be from Haribo Hero. He supplied a lap uh, via Discord, and it's good enough for me to use as an analysis um, around Spa in the Lamborghini. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to watch his lap and then we're going to go into the data and focus on one or two corners to see where Haribo Hero can improve. Okay, breaking in a nice straight line for turn one, but sliding quite a bit, going into the hairpin. So I'm pretty sure we can look at uh, braking and steering traces for that one. Now, as he's going to be braking for turn five, should be braking at the curb, which he does. Misses the apex curb there though, which tightens up turn six and is going to also compromise turn seven. Still gets a good apex there, um, but does not use a lot of curb on the exit. So some work to be done there. And for turn eight, he didn't break and turn in. He turned in too late. I'm pretty sure we're going to see that in the data. Created a lot of oversteer on the exit. Puan is decent, but again, not using enough um, of the road on the exit. Should be breaking at the curb, getting onto this inside curb here, which he misses. And he's just not carrying enough speed. I think he could have been down a gear as well. Or if he carried more speed, it would have um, been a bit more beneficial um, in terms of grip going through the corner. Stavlo 1 and Stavlo 2. Small lift through Stavlo 2, but I think he could have taken that flat. Um, just because there was a lot of space on the exit that he missed out on. To cross the line on a 220.8. All right. So now that we've analyzed the lap quickly, let's jump into Delta and see if there's anything highlighted in the data, which we can point out to Haribo for areas of improvement. Don't forget, the things that I'm spotting here and the points that I bring up, you can also try and find in your data to see where you can improve. Now we are in Delta to analyze Haribo's time. And we're going to compare it against one of our pro lap times of a 2.15.8. So pretty much five seconds gap here. Now, when you first open the data, it's always important to try and pick up on overarching patterns, often easily detected by a misalignment in the data, just generally speaking. So throttle looks decent. Okay. Braking, you can see that there's some peaks here. Um, the yellow is the, the reference lap, is the pro lap. There are some peaks in the reference lap that are higher than Haribo's indicates that um, either Haribo's not going into the corner quick enough or is not aggressive enough on the braking. Uh, if we look at the steering traces, um, the pro is turning less, which is very common in eSports. So if the pros, uh, the pro eSports drivers with their pro setups as well, they'll try and rotate the car earlier, which reduces the amount of steering input they have in the corners. Um, Whereas Haribo, he has moments of oversteer, like you can see here and here, which we're going to have to cover. But the biggest giveaway of all of this, and especially around a track like Spa, is in this scenario, it's the speed trace. So almost everywhere, Haribo is slower than the reference lap um, on corner exit, on um, also around the apex, like just, just everywhere, the reference lap is sitting above the the lap of Haribo. So in general, Haribo is not carrying enough speed. We can see that easily through um, just through the speed trace. So whenever you open up Delta and you want to just get a general feel, try and spot the patterns as soon as you can um, to understand where you should be analyzing. But in this case, because it's just general speed, it's actually pretty hard to sort of coach in improvement. So we're going to try and dive into throttle and braking to see if there's something in there which we can find which can help Haribo improve. Now, the trap that many people fall into is to focus on uh, Eau Rouge and Blanchemar. Forget that. Let's focus on Sector 2. Sector 2 starts from Turn 5 and ends at the exit of Stavlo 2. So we're just going to zoom into that section here. Okay. And if we look, if we start at Turn 5, almost in every scenario, Haribo is getting on the power earlier than the Pro, but the Pro is also carrying more speed, or in some cases, stopping and rotating the car sooner, which allows him to get to full throttle sooner. Perfect example. If we go into turn eight, turn eight is uh, this corner here, Bruxelles. 
we zoom in here, you'll see that there is a little dip in the pro's lap time, uh, in the pro's cornering speed. So it carries more speed going in. There's a his speed dips below Haribo's, but he has a better exit. In a GT car, you want to get the car turned as quickly as you can, which to means to maximize the point of rotation. If you carry too much speed going into the corner, you flow through the apex too quickly, which pushes you wide and also delays the point at which you can get on the power. So if we look at the braking here, Haribo brakes earlier than the Pro and trails off much quicker than the Pro as well. So not only is he braking earlier, but he's releasing the brake earlier, which allows him to carry more speed, which often intuitively feels like the better thing to do. But because he carries more speed, he doesn't get his rotation done quick enough and it delays the point at which he can get to full throttle. So he tries to tap the power, note that he has not finished rotating the car. So he's on the power before the point of rotation. And then he hesitates on power for a long time before uh, reaching full throttle. The pro brakes later, gets the, st the car stopped quicker. Okay, so he's, he's gaining, let's see, on the meters. So here's our meters thing, the distance. So the difference between Haribo braking 2836 and 2860. So about 30 meters, in this case, 20 meters later, 25 meters later on braking. Um, and also I would guess around 20 meters later um, on the throttle for the Pro. So uh, Haribo touches the throttle at around 2972 and the Pro touches it at 3000. So the whole sequence that Haribo is doing is 30 meters too early compared to the Pro. That compromises his rolling speed through the corner, it compromise, compromises his maximum point of rotation, and it compromises the point at which he can get on the power. And you can see that the delta in turn eight, if we look, so your delta is on the right hand side here, the delta is, he goes into the corner at 1.5 seconds down, and he exits the corner at 1.9 seconds down. So he lost half a second from the breaking point to the exit, just in one corner. So key point there, brake a bit later, get the car stopped, get it rotated sooner so you can get on the power sooner. And I don't mean touching the power sooner, I mean getting to 100% throttle sooner. And you can't do that if you've got too much steering angle in the car. The next one I wanted to focus on is Stavlo 1 and Stavlo 2. Here's a key thing. Just overall, the pros straight starts when he gets on the power at the apex of Stavlo 1 because he's now full throttle all the way to the bus stop. Contrast that to Haribo Hero, must like the sweets, who knows. And he's got a small lift in Stavlo 2, which means his straight only starts at the exit of Stavlo 2. So the pros straight starts at the exit of Stavlo 1. The, ref, the driver that we're analyzing, his straight starts at the exit of Stavlo 2. Your straight is starting when you are at full throttle. Keep that in mind. Okay, now, if you look here, it's only around a 30% lift for Haribo Hero. But if you go back and analyze his exit in Stavlo uh, 2, you'll see that he leaves quite a lot of space on the exit, which means that that 30% that lift was more like a confidence lift. So here's Stavlo 1, gets a bit too much oversteer going in. And here he could have used a bit more bit more curb on the outside. If your inside wheels are on this curb here, you will not get track limits. If they go over the curb, you will. So we've got about a full car width of space that could have been used um, in this corner in order to have achieved full throttle. Okay, last little point to analyze for Haribo. Let's take a look here, is Puan. So if we zoom into Puan, it's the double left in the middle of sector two, high speed. Again, the trend lines are what we should be looking at. So the pro gets on the power later. That usually indicates they're carrying more speed. Um, they also were braking a bit harder to begin with. And for the most part, trailed off a lot of their braking quite early on. If you contrast that with Haribo Hero, um, he held this, the brake for much longer and did an overlay of the throttle to try balance the car. Now, we need to understand why is this happening? Because just looking at the data here, Haribo Hero broke less, 
got on the power earlier, so why isn't he carrying more speed? If we scroll down a bit, we'll see that Haribo Hero was turning too gently through the corner, whereas the Pro did his steering, he got his rotation done once and very quickly. So in the last phase of releasing the brake, he starts to turn the car and waits for the car to rotate. So very late into his turning phase, he then starts to get on the throttle. Haribo Hero is hesitating the whole way through the corner. And a lot of that is created in this phase here. So from, if we look at the distance from 3702 to around, for about 20 meters, there's hesitation in the inputs of Haribo Hero, which result in just a slower and less confident um, corner. Now we know this because there's a lot, there's three inputs going on. There's the braking with a big overlay on throttle and not an aggressive steering input, just trying to be too smooth and compromising the, the, the way that the sequence should be unfolding. The Pro brakes, then he turns, then he gets on throttle. He's separated out his three inputs um, in a way that the car can cope. First, the car can cope with braking, then it copes with the steering, then it copes with the throttle. Whereas Haribo Hero has tried to combine all three at once, which oftentimes, um, in the non-technical way, just kind of locks up the car. The car doesn't know, should I be braking? Should I be turning? Should I be accelerating? I don't know. You've gotten, you've put all three into the car, and now the chassis is going to sort of wind up in the wrong way, and it just creates unwanted um, ch chassis dynamics, which makes the corner feel less secure and so on. So there you go. Those are three key points to look at. Um, with this specific uh, data analysis. Um, I hope you found value in those because trust me, everything that I pointed out here, you could probably find a lap of your own where you see similar trend lines. All right, I'll be doing more of these in the future. So feel free to submit your laps um, to our Google Sheet. You can find it in Discord. We'll link it in the comments section below. And every, every second week, I'll be analyzing a sequence of laps to help you improve your data analysis and therefore your lap times. I'm Coach Dave, and until the next one, catch you on the next lap. Peace.